as it's Pentecost today, surprise, surprise, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. And as Adrian's mentioned, I thought I'd begin by just sharing something of my story. Part of my early family life, I guess, for so many people involves sort of vague connection with church. You know, Easter wasn't Easter, Christmas wasn't Christmas unless you went to church. But it wasn't until I was a teenager that I really began to sort of understand properly the content of the Christian faith and, and as a result was really captured by the person of Jesus. It began by being invited to, to go and hear a lawyer speak about the resurrection and he asked us as his audience to be a jury and he presented what he saw as the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus and at the end of his talk I was thoroughly convinced that the resurrection had taken place and Hence, that marked the beginning of my Christian journey. But I was also caught up again, as so many, and you'll probably, many of you identify with this, with a youthful crowd inclined to rebellious misbehavior uh, rather than following the way of Jesus. And uh, I'd regularly set out, you know, going out with this crowd to maintain a Christian standard, and I would fall flat on my face. The influence of the crowd would win. I claimed the title Christian, but I wasn't living as one. And then at, at, I was about 17 and I was taken to a, a place where a group of Christians had started living together in community. I spent a couple of days there and to be honest, when I first got there, I found them really intense and odd. I think I was unpacking my suitcase when somebody came alongside and said, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit, brother? And of course, at that stage in life, I didn't really understand, you know, what they were talking about. I thought they were a bit weird. But I was powerfully struck over the next few days with them by their lives and by their commitment to Jesus. And I could see that they had something that I didn't have. So it was on the way back home. I was on the back of a, a Honda 125 doing 60 up the M6 that I asked the Lord to come and fill me with his Holy Spirit and really help me live for him, live in the way that I knew I should be living for Jesus. And you know, at that moment, something so special happened. I, I just became so aware and caught up in the presence of Jesus that not until we were stopped at the service station and the guy who was driving the bike was filling the tank up with petrol, did I again become conscious of my surroundings well there's a lot more to my testimony um, but that was a key and significant marker in my christian life one of a number that leads me to be delighted to talk about the holy spirit god's gift to every person who wants to walk with jesus and let me say the stress again about the, the fact that the Holy Spirit is God's gift to, to every believer is, is just one that we can't stop giving. Over the years, I, I found that uh, some people are a bit puzzled about the role of the Holy Spirit in their Christian lives. Some have been put off everything God wants to give through the Holy Spirit, by the overzealous, a bit like I was at that place I was taken to. Some have been frightened by things that they have seen happen to others and falsely, falsely concluded that to be spiritual, those things happen, have got to happen to them. Some have had great experiences, and perhaps this is more likely to be relevant to, to many of us. But um, they've put those things down to a season that has now gone. And then there are others who still remain wary. Well, you will know that a gift needs to be received and unwrapped. And this day so reminds us that the Holy Spirit is God's gift to each one of us. And I just want to take a, a brief overview of, of the work of the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives, as Jesus said and taught. Just before doing that, I wonder if you've ever asked the question, why does God give us the Holy Spirit? 
just three quick reasons. Firstly, of course, it's so intricately tied up with his love for us. Without God acting in our lives, we wouldn't be able to know him. And it is through the Holy Spirit and his activity in our lives that we are made new and sealed as citizens of the kingdom of God and able to live out in the new birth and new life he's given us. Second little reason, God wants us to constantly know his presence. It's what he designed us for right back in Genesis 1. And sin ruins that awareness of his presence. The constant awareness that he is with us is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit to us. And thirdly, and I just think this is a brilliant reason, God knows we need help to live in the way revealed and taught by Jesus. We know that we can't put ourselves right with God by our own strength and abilities, and neither should we try and live for Jesus by our own strength and abilities. I think that's where I was going wrong as a young Christian. It was my strength, what I wanted to do, not living in, in his strength. So with those few brief thoughts on why God gives us the Holy Spirit in mind, let's take that brief overview of what God does for each of us through the person of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm, I'm just going to go over what Jesus taught about these things. So I'm going to make a statement about what Jesus taught and then the verses that that statement is, is based on are going to appear on the screen and they'll be on the talk that Adrian puts up on the internet. Do go over these verses if you've got time. It's always worthwhile doing so. The first thing I could think of was that he uh, convicts us of our need to be right with God. He convicts us of our need to be right with God. John 16, 8 to 11. And when he comes, he will convict the world <coughs> concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me concerning righteousness because i go to the father and you will see me no longer concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged the second thing that god does for us through the holy spirit connected with that <laughs> He brings us to new birth. He brings us to new birth. John 3, verses 5 to 7. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. And then when we are born again, God continues to work through his Holy Spirit for us. He makes the presence of Jesus real to us. John 14, 16 to 18. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Fourthly, he's a counsellor to us. He's the one who sort of whispers in our ear and comes alongside and helps us. John fourteen twenty six. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The fifth thing is intricately connected with that. He draws alongside and, and guides us into the truth of Jesus. John sixteen thirteen. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The sixth thing is that he glorifies Jesus through us. John 16, 14. He will glorify me, 
for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. You know, if we were together, it would be lovely just to sort of explain and go into these things a, a, a bit more, but uh, to keep things sort of brief and, and straightforward, we'll just carry on. The seventh thing is that he empowers us to witness. He empowers us to witness. John 15, 26, 27. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Those of you with a keen eye will have noticed that there's probably some additional references popping up as well. Do take opportunity to go over that, over those. The, the eighth thing, of course, is that he grows the character of Jesus within us. This is a key and such an important function of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? He grows the character of Jesus in us, what we call the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5:22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. It is worth saying, of course, that these things don't happen automatically. They need our cooperation. They're in independence upon the Holy Spirit, these things come about. And then, of course, ninthly and just finally, he empowers us to serve others. He gives us gifts by which we can serve and make Jesus known. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, all these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. Brilliant. You know, I, I just love going over those scriptures and, and reminding myself of what God has done for us through the person of the Holy Spirit. And there's always something else to sort of grow into, isn't there, and, and learn. Praise God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. What a glorious gift poured out because of God's love for us. And as I said and stressed, the gift of the Spirit is for each one of us who wants to walk through life with Jesus. Each one of us can receive him. Many of you have already. And we can also wonderfully keep on receiving all that he's got for us, all that he has done for us. And, and some, I'm just going to quickly mention this, some even, you know, question, well, why do we need to keep on, you know, if God has poured him out, why, need to we, why do we need to keep on receiving? Well, you know, the first thing I'd say to that is actually because it's what Jesus pointed us to. Luke 11, 13. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? That's what Jesus said at the end of Luke's sort of recording of him teaching the, what we call the Lord's Prayer. You know, And I'm no Greek scholar, but all the commentators and people who know about these things say that the language there, the, the tense in the Greek, as it's called, means that God goes on giving to those who go on asking. God goes on giving to those who go on asking. That's the key reason for keeping on receiving the Holy Spirit. But secondly, you know, just very practically and perhaps tongue in cheek, you don't live your whole life off one meal, do you? You don't quench a lifetime's thirst with one glass of water. You know, we need to keep eating and feeding and receiving from God. And that's the third, that's connected with the third reason as well, that his help is constant. It's not a one-off. Fruitfulness, fruitfulness 
is a process. Don't know about you, but I am still growing in the fruits of the Spirit, and I need to carry on growing in the fruits of the Spirit. The old Adam seems to have a habit of much too easily raising its head. So I wonder if, even though we're on Zoom together and, and in one sense we're together, but another sense we're still separate, I, I wonder if we could just sort of have a, a moment of, of, of stillness. Take opportunity to be quiet in your own environments and just give opportunity to God to, to minister to us to flow into a time of waiting and seeking and asking for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm going to pray that simple prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. So if you're not already doing so, can I just encourage you to sort of sit back and relax? Don't worry about what you look like on screen. Just focus on the Lord. Focus on the gift that he has given to us. You might want to hold out your hands. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, if we need putting right with the Father, Convict. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you said, as we've reminded ourselves, that by your Holy Spirit you come alongside us and help us. Lord, if we're feeling down, low, lonely, overwhelmed by all that's happening at the moment, come. Come and by your Holy Spirit, give us peace. Give us the awareness of your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. And perhaps even if he hasn't done already, God wants to show you something new today or give you something which will bring a revelation of himself into somebody else's life, whether they're here with us this morning or it's during the course of the week. Lord Jesus, you said your Holy Spirit would guide us and reveal things to us. Do that now. Come, Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, you want us all to be fruitful people for the praise of your glory. Help us to grow the fruit of your character as we abide in you and let the Holy Spirit work in our lives. And come now to help us in that process. Come, come Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, thank you for the gifts you have given us to help us serve you and make you known. Help us, Lord, to pursue love and eagerly desire the gifts of your Holy Spirit to bring you glory. Come, come, Holy Spirit. <laughs> 